Hey guys, and welcome to episode four of the Black History Challenge. Today we're going to be painting Rosa Parks, and I'm going to show you guys step by step how to paint this beautiful painting in acrylics. So let's get into it. Oh my God, you guys, it's absolute pure insanity. You know, we have to start with the underpainting. And I know it seems weird, right? It's so weird to have like this bright pink kind of neon thing going on. But I wanted to give the painting a pop art. I wanted it to be a pop art feel. I wanted these whole series of paintings to be a pop art feel. So that's why I went with these weird paintings with these weird colors for the underpainting. And if you watch me live, you'll kind of know why I choose in, you know, certain colors. So for instance, I'm going for like the bright neon pinks and greens and blues and yada, yada, yada. I don't think we've even gone to like the blue phase yet. But that's definitely what I'm going for. And right here, I'm pretty much outlining. So at this point, I whipped out my Posca pen. You know, my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Okay. And I decided to do a nice outline on this particular piece. Well, at first, I started out with the black. But then I switched over to the gray because I wanted to give it some dimension, but in the end, uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna like this color. So we're kind of just flowing with, going with the flow, figuring things out. And that's the fun part about doing a pop art painting is that you can figure out as you go and flow through the whole situation. I took out my small brush and I decided that I wanted to fill in the eyeballs or eye, the pupils of the eye for the correct word. Um, cause I want to make sure that, that I, I, I just makes me feel a lot better if I get that part filled in and including the eyebrows before I actually start doing anything with, with the face, because as we know, the eyes are kind of like the soles of the face. So that was, <laughs> that's kind of a major reason why I decided to do that. And, and then I went in and I started to put in the shadows on the side of her face. Cause I wanted to make sure I established all of my darks before I started. I always tell you guys, you have to start darks and lights, shadows and highlights go together hand in hand. I know when I first started learning how to paint, I really did not realize this. I thought, you know, I could just make things super bright or like use like the whitest whites for the brightest brights of my painting and it would be okay. But then I realized, no ma'am. <laughs> So, especially when you're dealing with acrylics, I realize you really need to start with your shadows first, and then you can work your way up from that by doing layers. Yeah. So, I wanted to do this where lately, I mean, I don't know how to explain it, but if you guys know about my earlier work or most of my work as far as art goes, I'm a realism painter, surrealism painter at heart, right? I love a good realistic painting. You know, I love like the Renaissance era and stuff like that. I respect all the work and power that goes into a realism painting. However, the, the downside to that is that you can get into this rut where you're creating, you're, you're working so tight and you're making things so realistic. It squeezes all the fun out of your art. So for this, for these particular pieces, I wanted to really loosen up and go with a free impressionistic style, which hints all the blocking that I'm doing, like I'm doing this different, like blocking, 
like a mosaic type tile type of thing onto the face which will give it an interesting feel and I think I've told this story before where I actually seen a movie and basically in the movie you know the people were uh it, it was about this artist that was based out of Baltimore and usually I don't like uh impressionistic type paintings I mean that's that was my stance on it long ago and I don't know whether it's like snobism or what it is but I never really liked uh impressionistic type of art but yeah um this movie changed everything for me that's why it's like never say never right um and in this particular movie he was an impressionistic painter and he did a lot of stuff with the palette knife. And if you know anything about palette knife, you cannot be too like rigorous or any, you know what I mean? Like you can't be too precise and rigorous with a palette knife. So things are going to get messy. They're going to be impressionistic. Da, da, da. So I really took a lot away from this particular movie in that you can still get your point across with a good piece of art, even if it's in the impressionistic style without having to be too rigorous, right, and rigid. I mean, I still love my realism. I You'll see towards, you know, at a certain point, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but at a certain point, I'm like, hmm, yeah, I got frustrated, and I'm like, you know, and I start smoothing things out, doing too much, but yeah, the moral of the story is have fun. Art, at the end of the day, even if it becomes your job, is supposed to be fun. So I'm still, like, I, I, I tell you guys all the time, like, depending on how realistic you want to make a painting, I feel like you should add more and more layers. At this point, we're going in and we're going to continue to add layers and I am kind of working my way from the from like almost the top of the head all the way down. So I put a dark color and I, I kind of went according to the reference photo as well. So as you can see in the reference photo, her neck is quite a bit darker. And even though she's a light person, a light skinned person, you can still see that the, that the neck is darker because it's casting a shadow. So I put in my dark colors. Again, working from darks to lights. And this will not be the final shades of the skin. But I definitely wanted to get that kind of like dark color going on in the neck. And, and have that whole feel in yada yada yada. And then at a certain point of the neck, as it starts to turn, I add a little bit more of a darker color. You see what I, you see what we see what we did there? And so you want to keep adding dark, right? And I go in with the purples and the blues and the yada yada yada. Staying away from the black so much because that's really gonna like, I mean, that's gonna take things to a dark place, honey. And we ain't trying to go to the depths of hell, right? <laughs> And don't forget to dry your painting, okay? So, yeah. Now, here we are with the hair. Now, I know the hair looks black from what you can see right now, but it isn't really black. As you know, I don't really use too much black when I mix colors or do any sort of thing that requires a dark color. I usually use the darkest color I can find, which is dioxazine purple mixed with you know, burnt umber, um, burnt sienna, stuff like that, the dark browns, or maybe a blue and a burnt sienna, and that will give me, like, the dark tone that I need. And I'm kind of filling in and blocking in her hair, but I'm only going to block it in with those with that dark color in certain areas of the hair, like the base of the scalp, going towards the part, and at the back of the, the head, that's going to be our darkest tones. Because her hair was black, but she had a little bit of gray that was kind of peeking in at this point. And I'm, I'm kind of, I was trying to speculate, like, how old she was in this picture. And if I really think about it, I would say she was probably late 40s, early 50s. And 
you know, a little bit of gray is kind of coming in, kind of like me, right? I got a little bit of gray coming in, not even a little bit, it's a lot at this point. Um, and then you saw, I don't know, let me not get into a tangent about gray hair, but either way, you can see I went in, I popped up my handy dandy Posca pin, and we're going in and we're gonna pop in some of those grays. And then I'm going to simultaneously kind of whip out my, my... Now, if you don't have Posca pens, you know what I would say? You could still get the same colors with mixing white and black or blue and black. And that'll still give you the gray that you need for these kind of mid-tones and yada, yada, yada. So I'm going in and I'm kind of mixing this black uh, color up again. And I'm going to pop it in on the same, and we, pretty much we're going to do the same order operations on the other side. So, speaking of fun, we're... Tomorrow, we're going to be talking all about our February favorites, where, where basically you illustrate some of your favorite things for the month of February. It's going to be so exciting, you guys. So make sure you grab your pens, your pencils, your tea, your wine, everything. And think about tonight. Like, that's, that's your homework, right? Brainstorm as you're kind of finishing up this portrait brainstorm and figure out what you would like to paint for tomorrow's February favorites or what is your favorite things for for February like what are you enjoying movies TV uh food outings your favorite place to go for the month of February have you done something super fun that you like damn I wish I could tell somebody. I wish I could, like, draw it and paint it and da-da-da-da. Yeah, so we're going to do a nice little journal page tomorrow where we're going to be painting and drawing and doing all the things. So it's going to be exciting, and I can't wait to see you. Here is where it's time for us to paint the... Not, I, I want to say weird, but here's what we paint like the the shirt, and it's a beautiful kind of vintagey shirt, like you would see, you know, a, a mother wear around that time period, and it has a lot of like folds and ridges and things like that. So trying to figure out a way to paint this and tackle this where it's gonna be. Not too daunting and fun at the same time was kind of difficult, but because, and especially because it's a white shirt, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, the first thing that you think in your head, like, yo, I'm going to let's just whip out my paint and I'm going to, like, throw just white paint on everything. No. I, you know, like I said, just like the whites of the eyes, the white, a white shirt is not white, right? Especially when it comes to painting. You have to give it the illusion of depth and other colors. So you can mix a good amount of white, but it should have other components to it. Like mix a little bit of a light, uh, a light yellow, a light purple, a light blue. Mix any color you could possibly think of. Get your grays in there. Your, your dark purples, you know, put your dark purples as the shadows. So you can really go in and get inventive with these white shirts or these white garments. In particular, I had a lot of fun with this particular piece because you could go in and you could really just like, you know, I made an impressionistic, really just getting fluid with my hand movements and hopefully you guys are too you know what I'm saying and speaking of that if you guys I want you guys to think about this if you have a problem with drawing 
or and you want to just like skip the drawing process, jump right into the fun, you can basically head over to Patreon because all of these traceables are now available. You can use them as a traceable or you can print them out and you and the kids can color them with some crayons. As the possibilities are endless. Or you could print it out, you could transfer it onto a canvas and have some really good fun. And then I also have some other behind the scenes activities going on. You can get that all at patreon.com slash creative girl of color. So I decided to go ahead and put a second coat on our background, which was a mixture of like that neon pink color from Liquid Text. Liquid, good lord, I can't even talk properly. <laughs> from Liquid Text Basics, right? And then um, mixed with a little bit of magenta, and then we had a whole lot of white. To give it like a beautiful, and basically you add a lot of white to add uh, opaqueness to the transparency of this pink paint. And I think it turned out beautiful. I'm very happy with the background. As you guys know, you already know what I'm going to say. Pink is my favorite color. There is no other color as far as I'm concerned. And you know, I said what I said. <laughs> so, but basically... The, the the moral of the story is no matter what color you decide to use on your background or your underpainting, just make sure you apply a second and third layer to basically give it the richness and get rid of the streakiness of that first layer. Yeah. So here we go again. We meet again back at the ugly stage. We're kind of still sort of in the ugly stage where things are still a little bit hideous and streaky and it's frustrating and you feel like you want to pull out your hair. But we're still making progress because uh, we are applying another layer at this point to get to basically kill the ugly stage and create more depth more realism, more richness in our painting. And that's pretty much what you can see me doing. I'm adding more kind of like layers to go into the face, some highlights to the top of the head. And it helps if you're kind of sort of familiar with um, anatomy. Not that I'm an anatomy specialist, but I know enough of the basics and I know about anatomy enough to know where the certain high points are on the skull, on the cheekbones and yada 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 so that way I know exactly where to put my highlights where to put my shadows and stuff like that and then at the end of the day if you're confused you can always just look at yourself in the mirror and like okay these are the high points of my face yada 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 you know what I mean that those things like practical skills or practical tips is what really helped me as I was kind of flowing through my journey however I'm still keeping it loose right still keeping it impressionistic still keeping it patchy keeping it cute you feel what i'm saying yeah
So as you guys can see, this is where I was talking about before where I got away from my initial thought of having fun, just adding a couple of layers, being patchy, being impressionistic with it. And I started to get into my brain and get into like realism, 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 you know, go ahead and blend, 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 blend. And you know what I mean? And it started to get really, really crazy. And I realized it started to get away from me. But in the end, we I feel like I've captured her. And you don't necessarily have to capture somebody totally realistic. But you should also just capture the essence of the person. And I think we did that. But you already know what it is. I love you guys so, so much. And I will catch you guys on the next one i want you to comment down below and let me know what you guys think and what we should paint next and i'll catch you guys later bye